When things get frosty in the North Pacific, the California gray whales head south for their winter vacation. Way south. California gray whales travel over 5,000 miles from chilly Alaska to the warm waters of Mexico. One of their favorite destinations is San Ignacio Lagoon. This is one of the only places on Earth where gray whales breed and give birth to their young. The whales have been hanging out here for centuries, but it hasn't always been a picnic. For a long time, whaling ships came here to kill the whales. People used whale blubber to make things like soap. Easy pickings, the whales were hunted mercilessly until they almost went extinct, like the dinosaurs. But then, just in the nick of time, people realized they had made a big mistake. They decided to stop the carnage and protect the whales. The whales were put on the endangered species list. That meant that nobody was allowed to hunt the whales and they could breed in peace. Everybody hoped that these awesome creatures would make a comeback, but there was no guarantee. Now, people from all over the world come to San Ignacio Lagoon in search of whales, but they come to watch them, not harm them. And thanks to years of protection, their numbers are increasing. They've been removed from the endangered species list, and the lagoon is filled with their long, sleek shapes. But the lagoon is not just a nursery, it's also a classroom where young greys can see their parents perform important whale tasks. Whales are mammals, so they breathe air like we do. This is quite a trick when you live underwater all the time. So one of the first things that whale mothers have to teach their babies is how to breathe. At first, they have to nudge their calves to the surface until the little ones get the hang of it. The babies are smart, and it doesn't take long before they're huffing and puffing like grown-ups. Sometimes the whales come up just to look around. This is called spy hopping. Scientists think it might help the whales figure out where they are. This is called breaching, and gray whales do it a lot. Scientists aren't really sure what the whales are up to, but everyone agrees it is awesome to watch. <laughs> Wow! The lagoon isn't just a classroom for whales. People can also learn a thing or two. Things like how big they are, how their skin feels, and what their eyes look like. The whales seem to want to learn the same kinds of things about people. Hey, who's watching whom here? The gray whale mothers and calves of the San Ignacio Lagoon are some of the only whales in the whole world who try to make friends with people. And that's pretty amazing when you consider how humans hurt them in the past. Now that's letting bygones be bygones. All of this is a good thing for whale watchers because gray whales are enormous. Some of them are over 35 feet long and weigh over 50 tons. That's the size of a school bus. And the whales are as strong as a bus, too. One little nudge could easily tip the little whaling boat over. But the whale watchers aren't afraid. They know that these giants are gentle, as long as they're treated with respect. With the coming of spring, the whales start to leave their peaceful lagoon. It's a long and dangerous journey back to their summer home, especially for the young whales. But with all of the things they've learned, they're ready. The whale watchers wish them well, but they don't need to say goodbye. A simple, see you next year, will do.